All right, so welcome to the Ultimate Splatoon 3 discussion. I am joined by that is our B2 dude, Ice Angel 22, also known as Ice from Starburst, and Shaq from FT1. And today we're going to be discussing a myriad of topics from new information in the Splatoon 3 trailer to the direction we want the game to go, and Splatoon 3 versus Splatoon 2. So if you guys want to introduce yourselves, we can start with dude, because I'm sure everyone already knows who he is. Yo, what's good, guys? I'm that is our B2 dude. I play Splatoon and... Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a oh, lot more. I, 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 I stream, I, put, I make videos, I, I used to play comp. Well, I still do, kind of, but not on a team yet. So one day, well, mm -hmm. I'll be back. You will be back. All right, dude. Uh, Shaq, actually. Okay. Um, hey, guys. It's me, Shaq, here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, a competitive uh, Splatoon player. I play for Team FTWIN. Six times NA champion, like million dollars earned over <laughs> the span of six years. I've recently been dethroned though by Ice, so things have been a bit rough lately. I've been crying a little bit, but things are going good. My plan is to make a team with Dude, bring him back, take over this team. Yes. <laughs> All right, sounds good. But yeah, that's me. <laughs> and Ice. Hey, I'm Ice. Uh, I play backline or flex for Starburst. I'm a competitive Splatoon team player, and I'm gonna try and start making soon on both twitch and youtube so yeah let's go the ice content all right so i guess the first thing we can talk about is just the multiplayer section of the splatoon 2 trailer just the kind of standard stuff so i mean can i just get any overall thoughts on the trailer and i guess we can start with dude because i know you had a lot to say about this trailer so far so multiplayer Ooh. section what are you thinking oh it's mad dude <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's so it's 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 uh like my feeling with it with it right now is just like I feel this game how it's kind of going with the, the multiplayer kind of plot is where it's like I, I mean I, I guess the specials are so they they they're, they're somewhat reminiscent of uh, Splatoon one specials I guess because they're like way stronger than the ones that are in Splatoon two and it also seems like I mean since I mean it's, they didn't show it but I think we'll probably talk about it later but like. Uh, I have a feeling that they will probably add like game-based specials as well, like tenor missiles and other sorts of specials to like work together and uh, capitalize on different things as well. So that crab special, that's kind of lit. I love that. Um, the big bubbler, little sus, but we'll, I'd love to see <laughs> how that works. But uh, yeah, I think it's it. from what they showed, it was sick. Oh yeah, definitely. All right, Shaq or Ice? Uh, I don't... I know, it's very easy to please me. <laughs> everything looked really... I don't know, everything looked fun, dude. Uh, I, I guess, like, special-wise, I'm with Dude on this one. Like, the specials feel like... I, I don't know how to describe it. Like they, they look way more fun than what we have. Yeah. Yeah, like... Basically what I said, yeah, he's pretty much got it down. Like, it looks like you can really, like, control a lot of the game. Uh, I, I guess uh, the way to describe it is like your individual skill would like affect how good the special is like a lot in my opinion mm -hmm. at least like looking at the crab uh, specifically but then like you have a Gibby shield like dude said I can't see about that one but <laughs> uh, overall like I'm pretty excited mm -hmm. to be honest I'm pretty much the same as Shaq and like dude like it definitely the specials at least look way more enjoyable than like, what we currently have and like even though Splatoon is like a team game or like a special based game, I feel like with the direction they're going right now, it adds more to like the individual level of like how much you can contribute to the game on your own outside of the team aspects, but still relying on those specials to be part of the teamwork. Mm -hmm. The only one that I'm really concerned about is like Shaq said the Gibby Dome, but <laughs> I, I have faith that like it's not gonna be broken or like if it is, they'll like own it. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. I mean, I'm the same as you guys, but I think probably the best analysis or, like, something that I've seen everyone agree on on the comp side of things, at least, is that the game just looks fun. Like, specials look fun, yeah. the game itself looks fun, the maps look fun. I think it just looks way more enjoyable. I think the special part is definitely a good thing to talk about, because we don't really have that much playmaking potential with specials, but I think everyone's kind of pictured, like, getting a quad with the Zooka or zip casting to the back line and killing them or sniping someone with a crab or all, all that stuff. Like, there's already way more individual playmaking power for sure. 
You guys are all worried about the bubble dome. I'm worried about the the killer well because we know that auto locks onto opponents. That has me much more worried. Oh, wait, I forgot about that dude. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I feel like if anything though, it might be like what Stingray was at first and be like completely useless because of the little damage it does. Yeah. Like yeah. if anything, it would probably be used as like, for example, if they don't add ten missiles to the game, I guess you could use that to like show where the enemy is probably, like speculation wise. Yeah. But I don't think I think they learn with Stingray at least. <laughs> oh, like definitely. how broken that can be. Yeah. I was I was gonna say too, like uh with that Stingray thing or well, Killaway of five point one, is that I mean, since it is automated, I don't think it's gonna be like like so automated where it's like it's an actual aimbot and it's you, you can't avoid it like i feel like yeah. there, there's gonna be you're gonna have potential to actually be able to run away from it mm. instead of it being like stingray where it's like if you're good and you know what that person is then it's literally like gg you can't do anything you know unless like you have armor mm -hmm. yeah i, I just thought about it oh sorry for no, go ahead. off. I, I just thought about it but like in salmon run they, they have like the bots automatically like control the the ray from the stinger or whatever so I'm, yeah. I'm like just thinking maybe it'll kind of be like similar similar in that aspect like kind of like dude said like not super broken yeah i'm also curious if it like because that's especially we know the least about it's six separate beams so i'm i have a feeling they're gonna lock onto multiple opponents but like who, <laughs> who knows at this point um i will say that and both for big bubbler and for the killer whale 5.1 i think it's gonna be way easier to balance both of those specials than it would be to balance, say, Ink Armor and Stingray themselves, just because they're oh, more deployable. So, like, it feels like there's way more you can change about them. But even though I'm, like, worried about it at first, I think there's just way more ways to fix it where it's like, I don't see a way you fix Stingray, like, 100%, it's completely fine. Like, that special doesn't seem 100% fixable. Same for Armor without making them different specials, where these seem like, if they're broken, they're much more salvageable, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, <clears throat> definitely, and like, you mentioned Incomer and stuff, and it's like, personally, I would much rather, like, I talked to other people about this as well, I'd much rather have, like, the fucking Gibby Dome or whatever, <laughs> I keep calling mm -hmm. it that, but I'd much rather have that than Incomer, because at least when you're using that, at least from what we see from the trailer, not like anything Nintendo's told us specifically or further gameplay footage, it seems like similar to the way Bubbler worked in Splatoon 1, where you have to be around it or coordinate with your team to actually make use of it. Whereas with Ink Armor, you could have somebody doing nothing for the entirety of the game, but just spamming that special, and all of a sudden your entire team gets invincibility. So if they're making invincibilities in the game, but they're making it much more team-reliant or coordination-dependent, like dependent, then I'm perfectly fine with that. Yeah, I'd say, like, I don't I don't really mind Bubbler as much for the same reason. It's like, Bubble has, still has a lot of depth in terms of how it's changed, because you have to be next to people, and it lowers the duration, so... I mean, having a deployable invincibility, one that, like, requires a person deploying it to actually move forward... I, I, I like it. Yeah. I, I think it's pretty good. Um, Outside of that, we know Museum's coming back, and we've seen the new stage. I'm personally big fans of both of these, especially Museum, but, I mean, what do you guys think? Um... I love Museum. It's probably my like other favorite map besides like Mahi Mahi Resort. Um, the the new map's the one with like the bridge, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the only thing I have about that map is it seems like there's literally no cover if you go top mid from like any sort of like backline that could be on like enemies. Mm -hmm. Like it seems as if you go on the bridge and you just have to sit there. It doesn't seem like there's any counterplay to it realistically like for example on reef the bridge curves in a sense so like you can't just shoot straight at it you have to like arc your shots or something else but in that map it just seems like it's going to be really easy to just apply pressure to mm -hmm. yeah that could definitely be a problem what about you shack my uh, i'm assuming the museum is also one of your favorites dude honestly like I never really cared about Museum that much. I don't know what I was doing in the first really? game. Like, <laughs> I, I was never like, damn, this map is awesome, dude. Like, I never really thought about it, to be honest. But oh, I wow. like it. Uh, All right. I don't know. I, I think, like, in this game, like, Splatoon 2, I, I've, like, I have my preferences and everything. But I never really thought about it in the first game. I kind of just played everything, and I was like, yeah, I'm fine with it all, I guess. I don't know. I'm weird. But 
I, I am glad that it's back as like my teammates love it, like Ice loves it, Yo is in love with that map. <laughs> you know, like, so a lot of my friends are happy, so I'm, I'm happy for them. Um, with the second map, basically what I said, I, I feel like, I don't think it's finished, I, I think they'll change it up completely. It, it feels like when they showed, they showed the Reef off for like the Splatoon 2 trailer. Oh yeah, it was that's completely a really different good point. By release. Completely different, I, I don't think it's going to be yeah, the, the same, bridge. right now it sucks in my opinion. Oh yeah, actually worth noting, the bridge in Splatoon 2, the first trailer, also did not have any cover. It was like a little wooden yeah. platform. So yeah, maybe... Yeah, it was just the platform. That's that's a really good point, I didn't think about that yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's gonna get changed, so it's not that big a deal. Hopefully. Um, but... Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll see, I guess. Mm -hmm. All right, dude, you got to be a museum fan, right? Yeah. yeah All right, I'm, let's I'm, go. <laughs> I'm, a bi I'm a big fan of museum. I mean, like, the, those days where, like, museum zones would be in the rotation, like, every single day. I mean, uh, like, a lot of people mentioned a lot, like, a, like, oh, my God, this map is always here. Why is it here? But, hey, man, I was enjoying it. I, I like that map. Like, you know, I mean, I just think the, the aesthetic of the map is just really, really cool. Um, I like the spinning platforms. It's just, like just something extra it's just you know something there's a little bit of life into the map and all that jazz um what's it called the other map the the new one from splat 3 uh yeah I, I've, heard, I've heard a lot of people saying the same thing where it's like it, it looks a little bland i mean i don't think it's like worst thing but it's probably just i mean like what shaq said is that it's just not finished i think so yeah. you know it's it's they're probably still working on it. It's probably going to be like a much larger bridge or something. So who knows? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, then. Uh, I guess it's about everything for the multiplayer trailer. Everything looks pretty awesome as usual. Uh, single player side is a little differently, and I will start this out by addressing my concerns. Uh, I think the single player campaign looks way too much like the ones we've had in Splatoon 1 and Splatoon 2. It looks like Kara Mode 3.0, and I'm very worried about that. What about you guys? Um, you got the uh, nice. I mean, pers personally, I, I never really pay much attention to the story mode. Mm -hmm. I just, like, I only do it to either get, like, the gear exclusive, like, rewards that they offer from, like, beating it or, like, the hero replica weapons, if I ever use them on the off chance. Um, I do have to say, though, that I don't know if it's, like, nostalgia from the first game, but I do remember enjoying Splatoon 1's story mode a lot more than Splatoon 2's. Oh yeah, I agree. Um, I feel like Splatoon 2's was either way too easy or like bland. It just felt like a repeat, if honestly. It doesn't feel creative in a sense. So, in the sense of like hero, uh, like what you say, hero, hero whatever mode. three. Yeah, hero mode three. Um, in all honesty, I I'm not like a uh, single player like fan i play it but i do enjoy like creativity so if they're creative with it and they at least feel like somewhat enjoyable i think i'll be okay with it but yeah there's there's nothing else i really have to say because i don't play it that much all right all right dude what about you uh so yeah single player is like uh i mean for splatoon one and two i didn't really care too much about it because i mean it was just literally just you're just, it's it's more or less just a tutorial of just how to learn how to play the game and if you already know how to play it then it's just like well i'm just gonna zip on by and get my hero weapons all that type of stuff so um i think what they're doing with it right now i mean it feels like they are adding a little bit more of a story and like adding like something like return of the mam mammalians i can't even say the word properly but <laughs> you know it's i mean there's like there's there's some sort of depth and something happening instead of it just being you're walking in w walking through levels and you know doing some stuff you know mm -hmm. it feels like you actually have to do something and like you know you got the scene with the the uh the rocket as well and it's just like it's it's you're you're doing something to get to that point and we don't know what that might be but um yeah, yeah, I think it's. I think it's gonna be something. I don't know. I, we, we still don't really know if like who's who's who are we really fighting. Like you see Octavio in the thing, and uh, we don't know if if it's if he's an ally or if he's actually who we're facing again. I mean, hopefully it's not the case. But um, actually, I got a comment the other day uh, that was actually pretty interesting uh, theory where they said, um, "What if Mr. Grizz wanted us to collect the salmon?" salmon eggs to produce a mass scientific experiment to use mammal dna 
and then explaining why Judd is used as a drawing drawing uh, of study to study of a mammal body and the Octarian as, as a starting point for making mammal mammal aliens or something like that. Mm. And I was just like, uh, I mean, my man's thinking deep of it, but <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not a bad theory. Like, I mean, it kind of makes sense. And, you know, it, it'll be interesting to see if that was actually the entire case of the the whole thing, considering the, uh, the, 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 the teaser post back in 2020 when they was like, save our salmons and all that jazz. So, and we still don't know who Mr. Grizz is too. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. All right. Jack, you have anything to add? I don't know much to add. I, I've like always been pretty big on like story modes in games, so I, I'm hoping it's good. Like kind of like what dude said, like it looks like there's gonna be like a, a better story, I guess. Like I don't know, bigger impact, not just kind of running through levels 24/7. Maybe I, I I don't really know, to be honest. Uh, but like I, I guess I, I I'd say I'm pretty excited for it, but I'm more interested in, like hearing your concerns. Like, All right. I, I don't know. I just want to know what, where you're coming from. I mean, I think my, I think lore-wise, like what dude mentioned is really good point. Like, I think it looks like there's an actual story rather than just Splatoon One story mode. But the Squid Sisters are more involved, I, I guess, even though they were kind of mm -hmm. helping you the first time. But I, I more just want the levels to feel closer to Octo expansion and less like the Splatoon Two I single see. player. Oh, for that, sure, that's for sure. that's my concern. Is it? It looks and it sounds like hero mode. Like the music sounds like a remix version of like a Splatoon mm -hmm. One song from single player. But I will say, lore wise, it looks really good. So I, yeah, I think we can hope for the best there. All right, so I'll keep I'll keep this section short. But they they said we're gonna get more info. I know a lot of people are speculating on a release date. So when exactly do you think we're gonna get more info? And when do you think we're getting a release date? Just pure speculation. What's this up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, okay. I mean, more info? Okay, so I guess um, generally, it literally could be any time until, like, till the actual release. I mean, I, I guess to start off with, like, when I feel like the game could come out, uh, I'd probably probably say march or april i mean it might be a little early i might many might speculate oh it might be a summer release but you know it might i i just genuinely have this feeling where it might be march or april or at some point like that and you know there should probably will be another nintendo direct at some point maybe around uh it's either they, there's usually one either January or February, right? Like at the very start of the year. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I would, I would I would I would assume that we'll probably get like more info around that point, and then eventually we'll get a Splatoon direct, which usually happens from I guess the previous ones. It usually happens like two or three weeks before the actual game comes out, and you know. Oh, that's and, short. Yeah, yeah, it, it is it, that short. I, I thought really I was short. like. I was like hoping that we would get like a trailer or like something like Splatoon only related, like maybe like a month or two, minutes. not just like a few weeks. That's not a good like trend then. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I feel the same way. I mean, based on like what you said, then it's like I really do hope we get a March release. Like if anything, it's like the sooner the better in my opinion. Just the game looks really really fun, but also it's like I don't want to wait too long to play that game. <laughs> Um, in terms of, like, news outside of, like, what you already said, like, the two to three weeks of the Nintendo Direct in January, I'm, like, really, really hoping for something, like, maybe, like, end of this year, if it is in March, or, like, right at the beginning of January, then, to, like, Splatoon only related, so that way, like, we don't get, like, another three-minute, like, video that we have to do an analysis on, and figure out like what this means i'd rather have them just like spend like 30 minutes or something just going over what their plan is for the actual yeah I, I i would say i agree with ice where it's like i know they usually do the directs only a few weeks before but i just don't think it makes sense here because like we got the we got the reveal trailer and now we had a trailer where they showed off single player and multiplayer it's like what what other trailer are they going to show off like are they going to do 
Splatoon 3 gameplay for the third time in a row? Like, yeah, I true. just don't know what else they would show. Like, what else they could tease. Unless if there's, like, a Salmon Run type mode. Not saying, like, Salmon Run, but saying, like, another mode they could show off. But I just don't think there's too much to say. So it kind of gives me hope that we might get a Splatoon 3 Direct sooner. I think it's safe to say that we might be able to get it a few months ahead of release. Like, I think that's a trend mm -hmm. that's possible to be broken. Release date, I'm torn on because... I I'm split because A, I want to play Splatoon 3 and get off Splatoon 2 as fast as possible. <laughs> like, <laughs> I... <laughs> that game just looks 50 times more fun. And my weapon, you know, Range Blaster, I, I like that gun, is almost certainly going to be better in that game. So, on one hand, I really want to play it. On the other hand, I'm so worried about Nintendo rushing the hell out of this game and us getting, like, eight maps on release again and, like, not every main weapon and the same thing that happened in Splatoon 2 or, like, scuffed game balance, like, triple of a weapon, that kind of thing. So, I, I'm i worried either way. Like, I'm worried sticking with Splatoon 2 for much longer and I'm worried Splatoon 3 coming out too soon. I'm going to go with these prediction, though. I think March is kind of likely. I think it makes sense. And I think Nintendo 2022 is such a huge release date year for them. They have so many games. I think they want to get Splatoon out as soon as possible. So I'd say probably March as well. What about you, Shaq? You're kind of in the same boat as you guys, like with the March, April kind of thing. Because like, kind of like what you guys said, I don't know what else there is to, to show. Like, I feel like so much development's been done already, I guess. I don't know. Like... It just feels like we still don't have a release date, which I, I kind of thought we would get one, I, I guess, because yeah, they've shown too. up like, quite a bit, to be fair. Um, so I guess I'm a bit confused because we don't have one, and I don't know if that means like they're not as far as I like in development as I think they are. Um, I, I guess like before the like information in the direct last week, I thought it would come out like in summer because I thought they'd want to like milk it for like their e3 thing mm -hmm. and do like oh like invited teams get to play splatoon 3 early but i feel like that's too late i, I like i don't know my my thinking is that they've shown off so much mm -hmm. like they're it's not like they're creating uh the game like from scratch on a new console I, like i'm sure they're reusing a bunch of stuff you know yeah. so uh, like even though i i could understand if they would i don't know want to do that world championship thing or whatever um, I, it feels like it's too late um, because it, it looks like they've done so much. So I like I'm in the boat of March, April, in my opinion. And I guess I would think we would get news like maybe December. I don't know. They always kind of give stuff around like the the winter months, I guess. Yeah, I'd agree. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna get a world championship either. As much as I'd like it, I I just also feel like with what the dog doing. I'm gonna have to censor that in my video so YouTube doesn't hate it. Ah, oh, I forgot. Anyway, with, with the thing happening, uh, I, I think it's just kind of risky to do something anyway, even if it is, like, later into 2022. Like, especially with the mm -hmm. variants going around and stuff, it's something where we kind of have to be careful about it. Yeah. I don't think Nintendo wants to get into any of that, to be honest. Yeah, I like... just don't see them doing it. And there's no way they're holding it online, because their online is terrible. So there's <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, no not. way they're holding it online. <laughs> Surely not. Uh, all right, though, I guess, like, March, pretty reasonable, I think. I think it probably has a chance to be a bit later, but hope we can hope you know. Mm -hmm. Um. All right, so starting what will probably be a few topics on the Splatoon 3 versus Splatoon 2 debate. We talked about specials a good bit, but I want to kind of talk about, I guess, special design in general in Splatoon 3 compared to 2, or how things are changing, because we've said a lot that the specials are more individual focus, and that it definitely seems more fun. But from a competitive standpoint, like in terms of playing the game competitively, is this the better special design that we want? Like, do we want more individual-based specials? Is there, like, a point where there could be too many? Where we need more Splatoon 2-type specials in the game? Like, what's the what's the type of balance you guys want to see in the third game? Um, I mean, at least, like, me right now, personally, I don't think this applies to everyone, and I don't think people agree with me. I'm, like, pretty fine 
with Splatoon 2's state right now, besides like 52 obviously, I think that weapon is like the most unhealthy right now, but other than that, I don't necessarily mind it because I do like, I do prefer to play more of like a team oriented game. Like I'd rather play Splatoon, so like, I guess the best way of explaining this is like, in the Splatoon 1 meta like endgame, it was literally all QR. And there was like no teamwork, realistically. It was whoever had like the best mechanics would win in a sense because everybody was playing the same thing. And everyone was respawning instantly. Um, in Splatoon 2, it's like completely not that anymore and it's a lot more of special spam and staying alive and whoever has the least deaths is going to win. And like you could play, um, like I would guess like conservative or whatever where like you could have a jet sculptor just camp in their spawn spamming Mr. Stingray and being and actually contributing to the game um so I think it's I think we do need more like specials or something like for example like the grappling where like somebody could use it and actually make it themselves and not have to rely on an entire team based thing but I do hope that the specials in Splatoon 2 reward like um not made for team gameplay but do reward you a lot more if you use it like coordinating with your team than like you just popping like a new jet or something and getting a pick and that's why you want the game mm -hmm. so kind of kind of like a mixture of splatoon 1 and 3 yeah yeah because um even though like i'm fine with splatoon 2 right now it is a little like annoying being honest where like some players or anybody really could just pick a certain weapon and like I said with Ink Armored, just absolutely do nothing else besides paint or just paint their spawn and actually contribute to like winning the game. I like I don't I think that's an unhealthy uh, special or like an unhealthy thing for the game because of how strong her is and in the sense that you don't have to be necessarily that good to use any weapon that has armor. Mm -hmm. Um So like with the force field in Splatoon 3, it seems really strong. Um, it probably will be really strong unless they nerf it a lot, but I do like the direction that they're going in that sense, or the direction that it seems like it's going, where it's going to reward you a lot more if you can use it like coordinating with your team, and if you have good teamwork, I think it's going to be really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, to kind of add to, to, I mean, it was, I think I kind of said something on, on the lines of this, but like uh, to say what kind of direction but they're going with uh splatoon 3 is in terms of like their specials like yeah they are stronger they're definitely way stronger in splatoon uh, than splatoon 2s uh you have a lot more it feels like that you have a lot more offensive kinds of specials but mm -hmm. on top of that too it's not like they're too it doesn't seem like they're too overly strong and i'm just gonna like say some of my examples like well we already I already said the one about this the, the killer way where it's automated and it's it's just kind of a special to locate where people are and move them and there should be like some sort of opportunity to run away uh the trizuka i mean it's a complete it's a it's a huge nerf to the original inzuka where you had like five or six shots uh, mm -hmm. depending on your special duration and you know back then it was like all right you could line four people up and shoot get a quad of one or use four to kill kill, kill uh, four or something like that you know or uh, with the trizuka it's like you only have the three shots so it's like you still have to play somewhat conservative and like make sure that you hit that shot otherwise you're, like, you're gonna mess up and it's gonna not be so much of a fun time or a great special for you to use mm -hmm. um, the other thing as well the crab I mean I, I didn't mention this but like uh, I mean it is a crab and from actually, I mean, I've, I've been like really like looking at this as how I think it might work is that I think like whenever like you're in the, the your turret or bomb sort of mode, I think it's only a thing where you can sidestep really fast or and only walk like in front of you or but like walk forward or back just extremely slow. And in that kind of like, sense, like I could. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a, like the crab know, dance like, video. <laughs> literally, yeah, it's literally you're literally walking like a crab until you're bowling, you know. So it's just like, I, I feel like, especially like that, it's like you're gonna have to like line yourself up and make sure that you're gonna be able to 
you know, really utilize how the, that crab would work. I mean, I don't know, obviously. That's just my take of what it what it looks like it's going to be. But um, then again, too, like, it doesn't seem like the strongest thing in the world. Like, it, it, it definitely is strong, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be, like, overbearingly strong, like how in Splatoon 1, were, where you literally just had a Kraken or you just bubble someone and use the Zimmy or something. Like, you know, yeah, it, I was going to say, like, Noticing the trailer too, it's like I asked, like, this web of like full mobility if they're not all and it doesn't seem. And like, if anything, that's a really good like Nintendo side like option or not option, but like um change I guess on their part or like something they want to do because it does limit how strong it can be without like necessarily making it a weak special. Hmm. Um, I I know I don't know if this is the case, but I do notice when they're shooting out of the crab, like when they're using the crab itself, it seems like the inkling is really open. So I have a feeling mm. where like, what if you can just go up behind this person and kill them while they're using this special type thing? I'm not sure if that's going to be the case, but I don't see realistically yeah, especially if any they shield. Yeah, especially yeah, if they can't turn like, around. Because <laughs> it's like, I don't see any, um, because I'm assuming it's like one of two options, but like you can't kill them, but you can do damage to the crab itself. Or where you can kill them, but the crab itself has a lot of HP, so it's harder to like destroy it. Mm -hmm. um, I think, realistically, I feel like as of right now, it's not too far fetched to say that you could be able to kill somebody when they're in the crab mode, at least from behind. Um, other than that, yeah, I'm not sure realistically what else could be. Mm. One thing though, I just hope is that. With the you know the the big bubbler thing, I just hope that you can't put it on like on the tower and tower control. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's it. that's what I was saying too. It's like I don't want that to be the tower. I, I you forgot. You want to make sure that thing bounces off. I forgot who I watched. I, I think it was Vasco's analysis, but I I could be wrong here. To where they mentioned the big bubbler has like two parts. Like there's the there's the bit at your feet, and there's the thing that's at top. And he said that it, what if when those separate, the bubble shield disappears? So if you put it on like. A moving platform, it would separate the top and the bottom part and kill your big right. bubbler. So you okay, could only use it on stable surfaces. I think that is really smart. I think it's either that or the top of the bubble thing, whatever that is, is probably how you destroy it. I would say one of those, if not both of those options, are probably going to be true. Because if not, like... I just don't see Nintendo putting a fully unbreakable shield in the game. I don't know. That just seems unlikely to me, doesn't it? But... I mean, maybe we'll have to see. Uh, I definitely agree that we could use, like, a hybrid of Splatoon 1 and 2 specials. I think that them having ample counterplay is really important. Like, Splatoon 1 specials are fun, but sometimes you would just... They'd pop a special and you just lose. And it didn't matter in that game as much, because, like, Quick Respawn and the meta at the time. But we're not going to have that in 3, so it's like, if it's just straight-up broken specials, then the game's going to have a problem, so... I, I do think that's fair. And I also think what Ice said about having some team-based specials is fair as well. Like, to me, there should still be some specials that really benefit from team coordination. There should just be way less of them than there is in 2. Like, I think the majority of specials should be, like, these new ones that we have, or, like, Inkjet and Ultra Stamp. And then, like, having some specials like Tenet Missiles, which are probably in the third game, is completely fine. But my, oh. my issue with Splatoon 2 is there's just so many displacement specials in the game like there's bomb rush tandem missiles booyah bomb ink storm like there's just so many displacement specials it just gets annoying to play especially mm -hmm. any kind of slower weapon at times i do agree with you in the sense of the displacement weapons but in terms of like the team of it i honestly would rather have it stay the same if i'm being honest like mm -hmm. like i said previously personally i prefer a game the team with the best teamwork is going to win necessarily the team with the four best players mm -hmm. so if they do if the specials are in line with that then i'm fine with it although i know more people would like prefer like they could pop a special and like be the one that gets the quad or like they pop a special and now they can carry the game themselves or something mm -hmm. but that's just not something that i would personally enjoy i'd much rather have more like i think it's down to the line of like would I rather have more individual freedom versus, like, team-related stuff? And honestly, I'd rather have the team-related stuff. Like, in a perfect world, we would have, like, a perfect balance, right? 
Yeah. But if we don't, I think I would say I'd rather have a more team-based game than one that is like favors individuality, as bad as that sounds. At least in terms of like comp, like tournament-wise, rims. And I know like Shaq said, like world championship, like major tournaments and stuff, I'd rather have like the team aspect more than the individual aspect. But I guess in terms of like having fun with the game itself, you would definitely want like individuality more. Mm -hmm. All right, what about you, Shaq? Uh, I'm not very good at talking about like the direction, I guess, right? Like how they can make like better special for Splatoon 3. Um, I was talking with like my coach the other day and basically like, it's kind of like what you said, lots of displacement specials. The stuff that's good right now, they don't really help you move forward. They kind of just make it so the enemy team can't really play the game for like a little bit. Yeah. Like, you have your bomb rush, you're stalling for time missiles you're making people move around the map they can't take control um the booyah kind of like denies some small areas etc Th that's like a lot of specials right now so i guess like what you would want are specials where you can you know they, they it's less so they they're stalling the enemy team out from like uh making or like moving around the map uh, like obviously you want some of them like you said but you don't want like all of them to kind of dominate your meta right yeah so you you want some specials that can help you move forward as opposed to specials that kind of just make it so the enemy team can't move in and like i, I don't know how, how you would go about that like you can have your the the trizuka the um what is it the zip caster yeah yeah like you have like some specials that are more aggressive which are good and then you i you still have that uh like killer whale thing which kind of like makes people move um, I, I'd say you just need like a good balance of both, uh, because we, we don't really have much, I guess, except for all I can think of is like Inkjet and the Hammer. But yeah, I'd, I'd say those are the only like, I mean, maybe I Baller the at the start. I mean, maybe yeah, Baller at the start or Splashdown, but like, I, I would say Baller isn't too aggressive now and Splashdown is, uh, yeah. Splashdown. <laughs> yeah, Baller feels like a thing like, oh, I'm in a bad situation, you just pop it, you can like maybe live. Mm -hmm. Um. You should get pushed around into that thing, dude, like. Yeah. So like you, you kind of need a balance of both, and like uh, I'd say the less specials, um, like I don't know, maybe keep it to like two or three at most that kind of like displace people, and you don't want multiple being good at like the same time, I guess, or like super super good at the same time, because uh, then I guess it'll be a, a, a problem. Uh, but I, I still think we can have like a, a more aggressive special based meta, and still have it be like based on coordination. Like obviously, like if you're using your zip caster it's probably going to be a bunch of people looking at it and that's when your team the rest of your team is going to be moving in you know trying to take advantage of people watching the kid that's literally like flinging around the map <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah so like i i like i'm with ice like i i i'm always team based over like the individual uh at the end of the day it, it's just like uh i'm not good at speaking about how that would be implemented but like it, i guess it needs to be done you know yeah. Um, you, and it'll you, make the game much more enjoyable for like a lot of people, I'd say. You say the you're bad at gonna uh, be mad though. Yeah. You say <laughs> yeah. you're bad at speaking about it, and then do a great job speaking about it. Honestly, yeah, like, I, I think that was a great job. So, I mean, I think that's true. Like, even the individual base specials, like Zipcaster, like, still require some amount of team coordination to pull off well. So, I think that's mm -hmm. a valid point. I would also say like this part of the reason I had this discussion for competitive stuff instead of just solo. Because I think we can all agree from a solo perspective, we want to be able to carry the game. Like, yeah. and I'm pretty yeah. sure no one's going to disagree with that. <laughs> so, yeah, for sure. like, I think undoubtedly going more individualistic based is better for solo queue and like ranked and majority how people play. But I, I do still think how comp is played and team coordination is still important and I don't want them to 100% abandon that. I, I just want more playmaking power without sacrificing too much team power. And I think that's something that we can all somewhat agree with, but yeah. finding that balance is definitely gonna be hard. I, I have good faith with everything that we've seen so far, but I, I think the main takeaway is we don't need to 100% step away from Splatoon 2 special design. Like having stuff like 10 missiles is okay, as mm -hmm. long as it's just not the entire meta is these specials. Yeah. The thing is though, like like Shaq said with this placement, if 10 missiles comes back in Splatoon 3, it is going to be a strong steal because mm -hmm. it's a permanent like marker as at least for the person you hire but then also yeah. your 
gets to see where everyone is, plus they're getting chased by those missiles. Whereas Dude mentioned with the killer whale thing, it's gonna reveal the location of the enemy, but you're not, like, it's gonna be a thing where you can run away from it if anything. So you're not gonna be, like, permanently revealed. If they added missiles, then in my opinion, there would be no reason to use the killer whale special. Because missiles are just that much better at, like, forcing your enemy to move. And that's, like, I think where at least, well, I can't speak for Shaq, but I think we have, like, the similar mindset about that. It's, like, the only way it feels like in Splatoon 2 at the moment, at least with a team that, like, doesn't want to move, is missiles. Mm -hmm. To, like, force them to actually move. Mm -hmm. Sure, like, Stingray is a thing, Inkjet is a thing, but with all of those things, you can simply pop armor. Yeah. and they can stand in place and shoot at you and that's like where his problem is and again where i agree with it's like we don't really have tools for us to like move in like we only we have to rely on like if you have a charger player your charger player has to be that random pick for you to like yeah. apply some pressure or if you don't have a charger player your only option realistically is armor and just trying to go in and hit a kill. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. like in that sense i feel like at least with missiles i feel like missiles would be way too strong in that sense um, if we don't want that much displacement specials, but still having specials that can stall. Yeah, I, I just use missiles as an example. I mean, more just like, yeah, I know only, mean, having, like only having one or two displacement specials in a comp rather than three or four, that kind of notion. So it's like, it, it still can displace you a little bit, I think is okay, as long as it's not a bunch of things that do that, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it's also a fair point that a lot of Splatoon 2 specials more force other people to move rather than enabling your team to get in. And that mm. Splatoon 3 definitely seems to do a better job like that. I mean, one of, the, one of the specials is literally just made to let you move anywhere in the map, so... Yeah, yeah I, I'd say that's really important. Alright, so uh, is there anything else you want to say on Splatoon 3 versus 2 specials, or is that all said? No, uh, I, I was going to just mention something you said about ranked, but... I'll yeah, go ahead. Like, I was just gonna say, like, I really, really hope that if they, like, they keep, I hope they don't keep ranked the same way it is in this game. <laughs> but if they do, please, please take region or like that entire setting. I'm actually begging this. Yeah. It's so noticeable the difference between when I play in American lobbies versus Japanese lobbies, and it's like I could be in an American lobby, get 30 kills, and still end up losing in that sense. Whereas in any other lobby, or like it wouldn't even be possible to get 30 kills because of the difference. And like, I don't think the X rank system is bad for Japan because of the amount of player base that they have, and like the amount of players that actively play at that high level. But in a sense, where like the West, I would say, is way more casual than competitive, I don't think it's a good system to have. And I understand, in a sense, if their like marketing or strategy is to be like, well, we want people to, like, get the highest rank in the game and not be upset that, like, they're bad or, like, they're not as good as other people. But at the same time, it's a ranked feature, and I feel like if they're going to include a ranked feature, then it should, like, work as a ranked feature in other games. Mm. Yeah. I, I think we can talk about ranked a little bit. I didn't have it planned, but, like, I think this is actually a good thing to talk about. Because something I have seen a lot in my comments whenever I do bring up rank session is that there's no way to play ranked modes for fun unless if you have you know eight people to do a pb or four people to do league so i think another kind of underrated solution for it could just be having a way to play unranked solo queue because that could work pretty well for having people who want to play modes that are ranked but not in ranked you know like zones without yeah. a rank system mm -hmm. but i, I definitely want to see the thing. system change I can 100% like attest to Japanese lobbies feel very different because I live on the Pacific coast, which means sometimes I get matched with Japan. And playing solo queue is so weird for me because like you get both lobbies and it just it feels so different every time. It feels like you're playing two different games at the same time. Yeah, yeah it, I really hope I we get a better ranking system. Yeah, I, I mean, with that, I mean, at least for me, because I, I live in the UK, so whenever I play a JP lobby, it's like crazy <laughs> it's crazy like the lag is insane but like i mean if if i wouldn't actually mind a, a feature like that as long as it's like you can set it to worldwide or your own region because like yeah. you know if like for me personally like if i was wanting to get get a high rank then i'm gonna go worldwide so because yeah I mean, yeah you know 
it'll be way easier to actually rank up and like not feel like I'm like I just cannot climb and getting one point every single game, you know. So, mm -hmm. but you know, I, I'd love an option like that. I mean, it depends if Nintendo likes who would actually do that. But. I mean, it's in Mario Kart, so maybe. I, I mean, personally, oh, yeah, Mario Kart Sorry, you can do Mario well. Mario, <laughs> Mario Kart you can do worldwide or regional, so it's like I don't think it's that far fetched. Uh, I oh, would okay. say what I would want that I think is far fetched is an option to wait longer to get a lobby closer to your X power. Because I will, sure. I will wait, like, I'm not saying Overwatch queue times, everyone thinks of that, and it's like, I'm not <laughs> saying 20, 30 minute long queue times. I'm saying I would rather wait three minutes to get consistent good lobbies. Like, if that's gonna make it even a good bit better, I'll wait three minutes. I'm not saying it's something everyone has to do, I'm not saying they should make it for everyone, but having an option to wait for closer to X power lobbies, like, if they're gonna keep that system, like, at least let us get good powers. I, I would like that personally, but... I don't know. I mean, no, that, that's yeah, like ranks hard. for sure. That's like a for sure like thing though. It's like, or like a for sure like I'm pretty sure at least every like top player, or like every like solo queue warrior that like wants to get like the top places in solo, would be perfectly fine waiting like three minutes to get a really good lobby, so like they have the best chance to like just equally like determine like who can win. It's not based off like your teammates just happen to be worse. Than the enemy team's teammates type thing and i think like when you're talking about it it really just comes down to does nintendo want us to have these options or like will these options even be available because having options just allows so much more freedom for the game than us being stuck into like their one system yeah i agree I, I would also say like on top of that i think probably nintendo's big worry is just wait times for ranked games they don't want to go up I think we can all, that's probably a concern. Yeah. Like, splitting lobbies yeah. could mean people wait more. I think that's the main reason ranked is like this. Is I think they just prioritize getting people into a game. Yeah, because it's like, like I said, their focus is probably, like, on just the fun aspect. And, like, making it as enjoyable for people. And waiting to play a game wouldn't be the enjoyable thing for, like, I guess the majority of, like, their, not fans, but players. All right. Okay, then. Well, let's talk about stages a little bit, specifically returning stages, because one thing that Splatoon 2 has, in my opinion, and I think you guys will probably agree, is I think their Splatoon 1 ports are trash. I, I yep. think they ported... I think Ancho and Pit are fine, and I think Blackbelly is fine on some modes. I think all of the other ports are absolutely terrible. I mean, What's Camp is it? at least unique, but it's still... I really don't like the their ports. ports again? Uh, we yeah, have yeah. Port Mackerel, which Mori Towers, I mean, there's like, yeah, there's Kelp like Dome, <laughs> Wally yeah. Warehouse, there want a mall. I just, um, I'm not a fan of them. I I definitely feel like it's uh, <laughs> the specials for Splatoon 2. I don't think they were designed for that game, mm -hmm. and I don't think they really work too well for that game. Uh, the the games that game's levels at least. Yeah. I mean, well. Starting with Stingray and Walleye Warehouse, that's just like, what the heck. Dude, why did they not change that map? Why did they... Yeah, that's, the, that's the one map. The exact same. The devs did say they wanted to have, I believe they said this anyway, that they wanted one stage to be exactly the same, but like, why Walleye of all of them? <laughs> they could have just added Museum. Like, they could have added Museum, Control. Maki, like, even like something like Bluefin or whatever like yeah like yeah, i feel just like they just not they just bad. chose the worst options realistically yeah like i think those maps are playable in splatoon 1 like it's no salt spray but mm. i wouldn't call them good stages even on their own game so i think there's so many good stages that i'd really like obviously i think the thing that we're all gonna want is more splatoon 1 map ports like, i think we all want like mahi flounder bridge uh what is the map? You said it earlier. Bluefin. Like, a lot of the stages that we haven't seen, I think people want back. So, I mean, you guys are all for Splatoon 1 ports that haven't been ported to Splatoon 2, or do you guys maybe not want to see those stages? I definitely want Mahi. <laughs> I really, really want Mahi. Me too. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm basically I'm... fine seeing anything as long as, like, it... I, I guess, like, not everything has to be changed, but, like, I wouldn't want, like, a carbon copy Bluefin. I don't think. Yeah, uh, you'd want like yeah. it's a I want, fifth. Yeah, I'd want him to change him yeah. a little bit. 
Yeah. Museum museum has a little bit of changes, I believe, but it might just be per four being a bit different because that map did change a bit with I uh, remember, each mode. But I don't know I if it was changed. Museum having three rotating platforms, or is that just like a mode specific? Um, saw there's one by your spawn, there's one on your plat, and no, there's no, one I mean, in mid. Like, for like, on your plat, there, I'm pretty sure there used to be three. Oh, you be mean like the thing sticking out of it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, that's I true. Might be wrong. I think, no, I think you're right there. I'm pretty you're sure. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, like, maybe they did change it a bit. Something. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah, maybe I, all I, of this is... I was gonna say, like, maybe all of this is a good thing, because, like, like... From how Splatoon 3 is looking, it looks like the more fun game, in, in my opinion. And, you know, if they're going to add these kinds of maps from Splatoon 1, I'm, I'm all down. Like, I don't want to play Arowana, I don't want to play Moray, I don't want to play Kelp, I don't want to play Walleye. Like, all these maps The charger in me is dying when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, well, hey, they can, make, they, can make, they can make charger stages in 3 that are actually good. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. Exactly, like Mahi. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, just, I just want that map still. <laughs> I'd say Mahi and Bluefin are both great charger stages that, while they benefit long range, aren't like albacore to where they feel polarizing for short range. Like, yeah. I, I played short range on those maps in Splatoon 1 and felt completely fine. I was still like a high level player in Splatoon 1, so it's like, I wasn't even that good at it. I could still do fine with it. So it's like, I think, I don't think any of those maps are that polarizing. I think the only Splatoon map people don't want is Salt Spray. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah, that doesn't need to come back. Yeah. Mm -mm. But, alright, so, pretty much in agreement. The Splatoon 1 maps that haven't been ported, we wanted. Now let's get into controversial territory. Do we want any of the Splatoon 2 maps? I'd say yeah. Um, yeah some of them. I don't mind, like, maps like Sturgeon or, like, even Inkblot, mm -hmm. necessarily. I just would like a change, like Shaq said, like, mm -hmm. in relation yeah. to, like, the Splatoon 1 maps. Like, like for example, Inkblot Zones, it feels, like, really suffocating. Personally. Oh yeah. So it's like I, I like the maps and I like some of the map designs that's two offers. I just want changes to them to like make it easier for like both defense and offense. I agree. Yeah. yeah. I there was a video about map ports earlier and I made a comment on it talking about it because it was someone who's against porting maps and I said because a lot of people are very like, don't port Splatoon 2 maps because they're on the same console. And honestly, like, something I don't think people think about is maps can feel completely different between games. Like, the Splatoon yeah. 1 maps feel very different in Splatoon 2 than they do in 1. Um, and mm -hmm. it'll be the same thing in 3. Like, Inkblot yeah. in 3 is going to feel different than Inkblot in 2, even with minimal changes. So even though they're on the same console, and I, I definitely think there should be less Splatoon 1 ported maps. I mean, uh, Splatoon 2 ported maps and Splatoon 1 ones. Like, I think they should prioritize Splatoon maps, because that's the one that people haven't played and are also more unique, but I don't I don't mind Splatoon 2 maps as long as they're not porting the garbage ones. So I, I I'd be fine with it. Jack, what about you? I uh, I'm like fine with it too. Like pretty much exactly what you said. Like if they pull like I don't know how they would pull it off, but if they do another walleye situation and then like I don't know, bring back like a really bad map. I, I don't know, I can't even think of like Shelter? something that's like really, really bad. And Shelter's not that oh, bad now, but... I, I, yeah, I feel I like guess. there's nothing that's really extremely, like, insanely bad. Like, I, I thought Wally was... Oh, terrible. Wahoo. Oh, okay, I hate oh, that yeah, map. Yeah, wow. that... <laughs> I am... No, I... Wahoo's Wah stage gimmick is that it takes away your ability to move that's... forward into the stage. Yeah, that, that's... So, that, <laughs> that's yeah, horrible. Ring back, I, oh my god. But like, like it's, yeah. it's a reverse of Mahi. Like, Mahi gives you more more stuff to do later in the game. Like, here's more stage to play on. This one's just like, yeah. eh, it's this time in the game. I don't want you to move now. <laughs> yeah, it's so bad. Like, what if you wipe the other team when the bridge is down? Then you have to take, like, such a roundabout way. Yeah. Like, it's so bad. I, I hate but, Wahoo. <laughs> I, I think, like, the only people who like that is, like, Sendow's team. They have Tent, Charger, like, it's not fair, dude. They're, like, <laughs> built for that map mode combination. But, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think they can... They can put like a wall. I, I, I'm fine with anything coming back. I mean, I wouldn't like, say it can. You have no. I, I, the Splatoon okay, yeah. one maps the two. I don't have complete faith. If they bring wall I back again, I'm, I'm probably gonna get put on Twitter again. Dude. Like, <laughs> I have yes. Yeah, All right, someone clip it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get put on Twitter again if that map is brought back, dude. Like, they, they have to not. Dude, they'll or bring they have it to back and it they'll bring least. it back without any changes <laughs> again. Oh my god. We want one stage horrible. to be the same. <laughs> It would, that would actually be terrible. But, like, anything else, like, I'm pretty fine, like, Splatoon 2 maps. Yeah. Wise. All right. Dude, anything to add in terms of map ports? Uh, 
I mean, for Splatoon 2, Matt, uh, I kind of have this feeling where... The, I, I have this feeling where I feel like they're not going to do it for Splatoon 2. I mean, I'd love to be prove, proven wrong. Uh, and I'm just think I'm just... This is just kind of me thinking, like, well ahead of the future, where I feel like, if we get Splatoon 4, they'll probably add the maps in Splatoon 2. But, you know, like... <laughs> That's, that's, that's just how I'm feeling with it right now, because it's just like, well, they're still kind of putting Splatoon 1 maps. I mean, maybe they could with Splatoon 2 as well, but I have a feeling they're not. Maybe it, it might be like a future game or something, and they, they reintroduce those kinds of maps, uh, mainly because, I mean, I don't know. I just, I just feel like they're not going to do it, but, mm -hmm. you know, let's I, I, it'll, just, it'll just be a C thing that we'll have to see when the game comes out. I wouldn't mind yeah. it, of course, but yeah. All right, well, while we're on the topic of maps, and I guess this is a bit off topic, but Splatoon 1 maps and Splatoon 2 maps are pretty different. Like, Splatoon 1 maps usually are some kind of gimmick, like Hammerhead has the bridge, Mahi has water level, Bluefin split down the middle, Flounder is vertical heavy, Museum is a spinner, etc., like, etc. Cetera, et cetera. And, and Splatoon 2 maps, by contrast, are very samey. Would you want Splatoon 3 to have more Splatoon 1 type stages or Splatoon 2 type stages? Like, do we want things that are based around some kind of gimmick and risk it being like Salt Spray? Or play it really safe and go with like Splatoon 2's maps? I, I guess for me, like, you kind of, like, basically talked a tiny bit about what I want to say, but like, I feel like if we go really gimmick heavy, we're like, really big risk at making some really bad maps. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like it's so easy to just mess up a gimmick, especially like I didn't even realize it, but you're right. Like, there's so many maps that are just there's just a completely different gimmick for like so many Splatoon on the maps. I didn't even think about it, but like I, I feel like it, you can make a lot of really poor maps that way, and then they they're just gonna get hit with the treatment like, okay, we're never putting this in the rotation, uh, like I mean, ever again. Are they? I mean, they've reworked at pretty much every Splatoon 2 stage has been subject to reworking, like Shellendorf definitely was. I mean, the only one I say that wouldn't is Wahoo. So, I mean, Suppose is it not subject to change? They if do. they make a bad map, right. they could try and salvage it. They've reworked so many stages could, in Splatoon yeah. 2. Splatoon 1 really just reworked uh, Urchin that one time. That's really about it. So. I, mean, I guess you're right. Uh, I just... It is still a risk, I mean, though. I mean. I'm fine with I'm fine with gimmicks, but I guess like not like every every new map being like some having some new gimmick, you know. But aren't there like, like maps already in the rotation that like which is not a lot of the rotation itself? I, I thought there was Pit Rainmaker was taken out, but I, I've been playing it recently. No, so nothing, I nothing's taken out. It's just that they repeat uh they repeat the rank X Max from last month. The only time they changed it is uh, they switched the uh, ink blot with Shellendorf because the ink blot glitch hadn't been patched, and now it's going to be back in because they patched it. So. That that's the only thing. It's just that they're repeating the rank X rotations. I don't think anything is permanently banned in Solo Queue in this game, except for maybe Port Clan. I don't know. Maybe there is, but I don't. I don't know for sure. Like Spawn, we know for sure. Yes. Yeah, All right. Well, <laughs> well, League League Battle doesn't. So I, I mean, I guess in that sense, there's <laughs> yeah. no bans because I'm pretty sure League Battle has every stage. So I, see. I guess no, it doesn't. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean. I guess not like everything being a gimmick. It's not like it it was in the first game. Like you have like maps that don't really have any gimmicks. So would this but... be another case where we want a mix of Splatoon One and Splatoon Two? Yeah, just yeah. so that like if all the gimmicky ones are bad, like at least we have like our safe maps, you know? Yeah, I guess. like our our Surgeon or Mako. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I'd say I agree. I'd want more Splatoon One theme maps than two, but I I, I don't disagree with having some of them being played safe i think that's fine all right mm -hmm. then i guess to wrap things up then to move on to the last thing is just general how we want splatoon 3 to change now this could be changed from splatoon 2 primarily or from splatoon 1 but is there anything else that you guys really want to see shift between splatoon 2 and splatoon 3 for me besides like the special thing we talked about earlier like making more specials that allow you to move forward instead of making it so the enemy team can't move in like i can't really think of anything besides that but mm -hmm. that's just me all right yeah like like i'm pretty um i don't know like i'm pretty satisfied with splatoon 2 right now outside of like the special gimmicks and like 52 i, don't, I can't really think of like anything else that i would like want fast to change to or like realistically a really big change to all right dude 
Yeah, like, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to say. Like, I think how everything works with Splatoon right now, I think, well, with all the specials, yeah, we already know that's kind of being changed. But, you know, I think from, I think with, uh, what's it called? With uh, how the game is right now, I, I mean, I'm, I enjoy it still. And, you know, I think they don't, they don't really have to do much to change, like, anything really drastically to make the game better. Like, it's going to be the same Splatoon. They're probably going to add some different things that's going to make it slightly different and would probably still like it because, you know, some different things is always nice. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not really, I'm not, honestly not, not too sure. <laughs> I mean, personally, I only have two things. One is being a bit careful with sub weapons. I, I don't want to, I don't want LD to be like this again. I want uh, the non bombs to be a bit better, less stuff like point sensor that ruins kits. I would say, I know this is not a multiplayer thing, but I, I just want a better gear system. <laughs> I don't want RNG. Oh, for sure. Because yeah. I, we all forget this now because it's been a while into the game, but start of the game. Like, nothing had alternate main abilities because you had to wait for the shop and you have to roll gear and... I, I don't want to do that again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would agree with that then. That's like... The oh, one yeah, that. yeah. Like, I just want to be able to like pick whatever abilities I want, like when I want. Yeah, I, I, I just Please. like... Let us buy chunks. I think... Yeah. Yeah, I think you can keep the rest of the system. Like, I don't... I don't mind the gear system if it's not the primary way to get gear. Like, if that just supplements your chunks and then coins are the main way you get gear, then you have a non-random base system as your primary thing with random elements helping you get your gear. But this way, it's kind of like, oh, it's just all random. It doesn't feel like there's any control. I mean, obviously you can influence odds, but yeah, that's what I'd say. They should make it less expensive too if, with, if like, putting chunks onto gear and to make whatever oh yeah I mean, can like, i they should just i think they should honestly I, they should just completely dumb dumb the entire thing down just to make it just easier like they i mean another game did it like um yeah. pokemon pokemon, pokemon Sword and shield did that, that oh yeah that's right. true was, that's true where it's like, like ev training and stuff yeah ev training ev training like they made that they made it so easy and it's just like wow i had my entire team in like the first day so yeah. it's just like cool you know they could they really could do that with splatoon as well it's just you know yeah i'd also say anything to do with sea snails should be able to be done with coins anyone yeah. want to disagree on that no i don't mind i don't mind sea snails being worth like thirty thousand coins but i don't think they should be oh you literally can't spend millions of dollars on this you have to give them a snail <laughs> all right then well i mean besides the gear it looks like Everyone, you guys all seem pretty happy with 3. I'm pretty happy with it. A lot of things the game could do for the future. A lot of steps in the right direction. So, I mean, I'd say Splatoon 3 is looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. yeah. I agree. All right. Uh, that'll wrap it up. Check out all these guys in the description of YouTube or on Twitch. You can check them out. I'll tell you after the stream. Uh, you guys know where to find Dude. Like, I'm sure you guys know who he is at this point. If you aren't, you're doing yourself a disservice. Ice has a YouTube channel. He has not put out content yet, but he will. And he is currently making a backline guide. So I know a lot of you guys on my channel would like to see something like that. So I highly recommend checking it out. And Shaq has actually been uploading content lately. So go <laughs> check out Shaq and the FT win content, dude, because it's, it's fun Thanks, stuff. So check out all these lovely guys. Thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you all next time.